This mechanics discussion video for Signalis does not contain story spoilers, but it will reveal aspects of gameplay that certain players may prefer to discover on their own. If you're the kind of player who likes to be surprised by all the gameplay in a survival horror game, consider avoiding this video for now. Signalis has various intricacies to its gameplay design, some of which are explained or hinted at by the game, and some which are not. This video discusses a few of these which helped me during my first playthrough. Let's begin. Signalis does not have autosaves. That's why, if you ever decide to press continue without saving, the game will tell you that you'll regret this later. If you don't save and truly end up dying, you will lose all of your progress since your last manual save. With this in mind, I actually cleared my first run on normal difficulty with zero deaths, because I didn't know how hard the game was actually going to be. So if you're already used to survival horror games and you're looking for a level of threat that will kill you, consider playing on survival instead for a better experience. Enemies in Signalis deal contact damage. This means that even if they're not doing an attack animation, merely touching their body will still hurt you. Another way to think of it is that their bodies have attack active frames all the time, so it's never actually safe to touch or walk into an enemy, unlike Resident Evil for example. You need to kite enemies here more than in other survival horror games to give yourself the space you need to actually dodge around them. In cramped areas where you don't have space to pull them around, you need to accept taking damage or use your aggressive items and guns to remove the threat that way. Going into your map, inventory, or other menus in Signalis will freeze time, letting you make decisions, reload guns, check your position in the world, or read lore notes without worrying about enemies damaging you while you do it. However, there is one important situation in which time does not pause for you, and this is a key difference between Signalis and many other survival horror games. That situation is when you're picking up items. The dialog box that pops up to confirm whether you want to pick up an item does not cause time to pause, and enemies can and will walk up to you to hit you while you do it. In one of the worst case examples, you can be hit multiple times as you're trying to pick up something you want because damage can shove you out of the prompt window and necessitate you try picking it up again. If there are enemies around an item you need and you can't steal it without being detected, make sure you eliminate them first to give yourself the time and space you need to grab it and run. When aiming a gun at an enemy, trying to shoot them if they get too close to Elster will have her push them away instead. If you keep holding the aim button and mashing shoot after this shove, you'll get a shot on them as soon as you both recover. This is best used with the shotgun as it does immense damage at close range, but you will often wait too long to pull the trigger, causing the shove instead, often by accident. You can also shove enemies without a gun equipped at all, by pressing the same button. It looks like this works best in response to an actual enemy attack animation, so you can't just shove enemies that are walking or standing still, they have to be trying to hit you. This mechanic seems a little janky, and it's difficult to do reliably in my experience. You shouldn't count on it to be consistent and work every time, but it's good to know about anyway. Your aiming reticle being crossed out with an X inside it means your shot will not deal damage if you fire, but holding your aim on an enemy will also cause your reticle to shrink in size as you ready a focus shot. The more it shrinks, the more damage that bullet will do. Pace your shots to do more damage. Focus shots down enemies with fewer rounds spent. You also seem to do more damage to unaware enemies. Enemies not detecting you is a big deal in Signalis. There are some rooms in which you can bypass enemies completely while getting where you need to go as long as you never alert them. Some of the earliest cases of this are like the kitchen with the replica butchering a dead body, or one of these storage rooms with a patrolling enemy. Stealth saves a lot of resources, and I recommend you stay sneaky whenever you can. These are some ways enemies will notice you from farther away. Your radio is on. Turn it off to be stealthier. Your flashlight is on. Turn that off too unless you really need it. You're holding your run button. Moving fast makes noise, walk slower to sneak easier. Or you open fire on them. This one seems obvious, but there are many situations in which you do not need to shoot. Just chill out and move around them. You don't usually need to kill enemies in a room, especially if you don't anticipate coming back to it more than once or twice. Enemies never follow you between rooms, so how do you decide when you should kill enemies? Well, foes that are in the middle of hallways like this, which connect to many other rooms, are usually a good consideration for permanent destruction, since you'll be returning to this area many many times, and the more times you come back to a room, the more chances you give an enemy in it to damage you. Shooting an enemy until they fall to the ground and then walking up to them to stomp on them with the interact button will finish them. Kind of. Eventually, even stomped enemies will rise again, and the way you prevent that and truly permanently destroy a monster is by burning its corpse with thermite. Thermite sticks are a consumable item the game will introduce pretty early on, and one stick is lost when you use it. It can either go in your tool slot, or you can just use it directly from your inventory when standing over a dead body. Incinerated enemies will never ever get back up, no matter how many times you revisit their room, so if you truly want to make a connecting hallway safe and give yourself peace of mind, burn bodies in those critical thoroughfares. Thermite has a second use most people don't know about. 
With it in your tool slot, you can press your tool button to close range, similar to countering a lunge attack, to stab an enemy with it directly, even if they're still active and moving around. This will begin burning them right away, and when you stomp on them after they fall to the ground, the burn will continue incinerating them until they're taken care of for the rest of that save file. Stun prods are another tool slot item, and while they're intended to be a defensive tool, you can definitely use them aggressively. Stun prods will typically knock any enemy to the ground immediately, giving you a free stomp to down them for a long time. Since the electricity from stun prods also arcs to nearby targets when you use one, it's a great item for piercing through a room that's very crowded with enemies. Though, note this also feels a little bit unreliable, and you'll have to really make sure every enemy you want to zap is very close together. Signalis has a hard limit of 6 inventory slots. The developers have mentioned looking into changing this, but until that change goes through, you'll need to find a way to manage your carried items within that 6 slot limit. Beginners to survive a horror game sometimes overestimate what they actually need. For example, if you don't anticipate fighting, a pistol with 10 rounds loaded is usually enough to get through an enemy that catches you off guard. On normal, 4 shots from the pistol will typically down most basic enemies, so on this difficulty a fully loaded pistol will let you kill 2 enemies before having to return to a save room and restock. This means you don't need to carry your pistol's ammo box on you, and you can just explore with the 10 shots inside the gun. The same can apply to healing. Yes, it can be useful to have a heal in your pocket in case you make a mistake, but remember that enemies do not follow you between rooms, so if you really need to, you can usually return to a save room, access the healing items you have in your storage box, and basically just heal at home instead of feeling rushed to do so while you're venturing out into the unknown. Signalis has a lot of lore notes and things you can pick up around the world. While some of them are just flavor text, a good number of them actually aren't, and contain clues or hints to puzzle solutions. If you don't know what to do, or you feel stuck on something, and you're sure you got every item you can possibly pick up, go back to your memory logs and reread some of the lore notes you've picked up while exploring. Many moments on my first playthrough involved me recalling something I saw or read a while ago, and I wouldn't have been able to solve some puzzles if I didn't periodically reread notes I'd picked up in the hours before. Also, some later puzzles in this game are genuinely hard if you're not used to this more old-school style of survival horror puzzle design. It is totally okay to look something up if you feel very stuck. This game is a lot more to it than just puzzles or just combat and resource management. I would prefer you keep playing, see the end, and then play it again over you being pushed away because you missed a random step at a puzzle and couldn't figure out why something obvious wasn't working for you. That's it for this video. If you're looking to play Signalis or you just recently picked it up, I hope these concepts helped, or if you hadn't heard of it, maybe you're interested in how it plays now. I think it has really good gameplay, it's one of my favorite survival horror games I've played in a long time, and I'm always happy if more people check it out. If you're looking for another cool content creator to watch play it, Carcinogen SDA will be getting involved with some more Signalis content these days. Check out his channel, it'll be in the description and pinned comment. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, may Fox shroud you, and may the night keep you safe.